For millennia, storms have pounded the southern tip of Africa. They protect a living food source of immense proportions. Sardines gather here in extraordinary numbers. Currents carry the fish along opposing coastlines into two different oceans. In both areas, Cape Gannets depend heavily on the sardines to survive. On the west coast, the shoals are being wiped out by man, and the impact is devastating. Driven by the resulting lack of food, the Gannets and other residents turn on each other in a frenzy of killing. On the east coast, a wall of predators waits for the second show. There are fewer trawlers here, and for the gannets, it's a time of plenty. While one coast starves, the other feasts. The Agulhas Banks extend for approximately 90 miles off the southern point of South Africa. Here the Indian and Atlantic Oceans meet. The mix of warm and cold water and the resulting currents create a powerhouse environment. Kelp beds west of Agulhas shelter high volumes of krill. These tiny crustaceans are the food base for all the other animals on these reefs. This is one of the richest marine ecosystems in the world, and where there's a healthy underwater environment, there are big predators. One of the most important species sustained by the krill are the sardines, which have made the banks their home. There's a huge biomass of these food fish around Agullus, and it's from this holding point that the bounty splits. On the one side, extensive spawning sees huge volumes of eggs and larvae drifting north in strong Atlantic currents, together with millions of fully grown sardines. This steady supply feeds the west coast of southern Africa and has traditionally supported a vibrant food chain. Along with the gannets, seals, cormorants and gulls have thrived off the sardines and massive breeding colonies like Malchas Island have flourished. The other expansion of sardines sees vast shoals of fish heading northeast from Agullas. Though significantly smaller than the west coast migration, it still provides a valuable food source for many species. This show passes a similar gannet colony, and it's from Bird Island that the eastern flock launched their attack on the shoals. For the Gannets, this is the tale of two cities. And the fortune that favours one doesn't necessarily bless the other. Both communities are dependent on the annual run of sardines. But throughout this story, huge differences between them will be revealed. It is spring in southern Africa. The ocean is quiet. The sardine shoals are gathering off the Agullas banks. Up the east coast, summer water washes inshore. 
sardines prefer temperatures cooler than 21 degrees centigrade, so they stay well away from the shallows, swimming deep in the cooler currents. The residents of Bird Island use this time to breed. Nesting pairs collect debris and dirt to build the turret-like platforms on which they lay a single egg. While the gannets settle into nesting, just offshore, other creatures hungry for sardine patrol local reefs. Black-tip sharks track shoals of game fish that arrive with the warm water. Family pods of bottlenose dolphin patrol their respective ranges, communicating and interacting in small groups. Common dolphins move in bigger family groups, traveling across defined territories in the open ocean. On the west coast, the Atlantic offers a much harsher environment. Plankton blooms and high wind result in low visibility. But this ocean is also rich, and the food stock for the gannets has, until recently, been stable. Cape fur seals prepare to mate in their massive rookeries. They, like the gannets, rely on the sardines to survive. The surface of Malchas Island provides an ideal environment to study the gannets up close, in between their hunting forays. The gannets on the island are the early warning system for the west coast. Any changes in the food chain will be seen through their behavior. They're specifically adapted to spot and hunt the sardines that surround their secluded colony. They're streamlined, and every element of hardware is designed with purpose. Front set eyes for judging distance on high-speed dives are vital. Protective eyelids are also important when entering the water at missile-like speeds. The disproportionately large webbed feet offer valuable propulsion for chasing fish at depth. In contrast to their extraordinary abilities in air and water, on land, the birds switch from the sublime to the ridiculous. The sky pointing is eccentric yet meaningful. For them, it's a form of greeting. Incredibly, the Cape Gannet is able to identify its own tiny nest pile every year and returns to it time and again. But when the navigation of some incoming birds goes awry, landing on a neighbor's property can result in a violent skirmish. The gannets sacrifice dignity for specialization. Dry land is clearly not their element, but they make the most of it. The most obvious visual difference between the islands are the empty areas on Malchas. Tracts of nest piles that have been abandoned. While the eastern gannet population on Bird Island is dense and stable, Malchas is noticeably shrinking. Where have the absent birds gone? For the occupants of the remaining nest piles, threats to their well-being are intensifying. More and more kelp gulls loiter along the edge of the colony. Smashed shells are evidence of the threat that the gulls pose to the gannet chicks. 
The remaining parent birds have to be more and more vigilant as the gulls are quick and merciless. But the gannet's biggest enemy appears on the horizon. Sardine trawlers and gannets return from fishing together, one far more successful than the other. While the boats offload tons of fish, returning parent birds have fewer and fewer sardines for their hungry chicks. These meager meals may not sustain them to adulthood. Undernourished and weakened, these fledglings have no choice but to forge ahead as best they can to take flight and hunt for themselves. Could the vacant nest piles be linked to this food deficit? For the parent birds, the pressure is on. By the end of summer, marine predators off the east coast are beginning to gather. Cold water from Agullus is coming, and with it, huge shoals of sardines. Island gannets are rousing themselves for the greatest feeding event of the year. They take to the air in droves. The flocks scatter over hundreds of square kilometers. The sardines appear sporadically over vast areas of ocean, making it extremely difficult for the predators to find them. Eventually, the gannets locate another sardine-dependent character, a large group of bottlenose dolphin also making their way north. An underwater view reveals this as a megapod an amalgamation of many family groups of dolphins that have left their respective home ranges and swum great distances to team up with the gannets. Further north, more birds begin circling above the horizon. Massive disturbance on the surface indicates that here another megapod has formed. This time it's a close relative. Common dolphins and they're on the move. Their focus is a small shoal fleeing ahead of them. The dolphins are worthy partners of the gannets. They use each other's hunting strategies to feed more effectively. Their forms are also designed to cover great distances quickly and they have to be ready to strike as soon as their quarry is found. But these aren't the sardines they're waiting for. They're a local variety known as the red eye which have found themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. Approaching from the north is an attack on another front. the dolphins home in on the mark that the gannets keep in the sky, the fish retreat into a ball for security. It's the worst thing that they could do. With the chain gang of sharks joining the efficient team of hunters, the trio set about devouring the ball of fish. It doesn't take long. With all these predators waiting for bigger shoals comes an element of frustration. The loosely packed red-eye don't satisfy the sharks, 
and while they know that there's food in the area, they can't get their teeth into it. Angered by the presence of the cameraman, one shark turns dangerously aggressive and attacks. Rather like an irate celebrity lashing out at the paparazzi. An unsubtle hint that for the cameraman, it's time to get out of the water. On the west coast, a new day dawns on Malchas Island. The future generation of aerial hunters are coming of age. They're under pressure to fish for themselves. Soon they'll need to fly great distances to find their own sardine shoals. The most crucial element needed for fledglings to begin learning the dynamics of flight is moving air. Early morning temperature inversions result in fog banks that are soon drifting swiftly out to sea. These breezes transform the activity on the floor of the island from one of idleness to a mass of frenetic flapping forms. While the gannets of Bird Island are hunting sardine, these Malchas residents are still battling to leave solid ground. On mornings like this, when the wind doesn't blow, the adults clamber up to a raised vantage point and use this as a springboard to flight. The adult birds are the ones that set about taking off first. And despite years of experience, without wind, they still battle to get airborne. the indignity of failure seems difficult to deal with. As the wind gusts, birds take to the air, and before long the sky is full of them. Their grace in flight is a far cry from their clumsy manner on the ground. They circle the colony a few times before heading out to sea, heading for the fishing grounds. Watching the adults leaving inspires the fledglings and they try to spread their wings. Competition is fierce. There's a real urgency to take off. But this one is going nowhere. With the brief action that occurred days earlier, the sea on the east coast has gone quiet once more. The shoals have passed the area and the gannets are following them up the coast. The cliffs further north are perfect for the film crew to spot pockets of telltale action out at sea. And the many estuaries offer as reliable a launch as one gets on this coast. Here, a period of warmer weather is swiftly followed by a cold front. Winds like this drive cold water up towards the subtropics, and the sardines are carried along with it.
The following morning, the sea is wild. Huge swells strike the shallow coast and pitch mountains of water onto the shore. Out at sea, telltale flocks of diving gannets indicate the arrival of the sardines, but the crew can't get to them. After days of rough weather, they can't wait any longer. The sardines could be passing. They decide to launch the boat and head towards the ocean. The pressure is on, and the risky attempt at launching begins. The skipper has to negotiate the river mouth, and then he needs to find himself a calm spot to wait for the fury of the waves to subside. Then it's a full speed race to the open sea before the next curler crunches down. boat just makes it and turns north after the flying gannets. The action begins very early. The gannets are diving soon after sunrise. The first views underwater are of real sardines. They're bigger than the red eye that have frequented the area until now. And with the help of the gannets, the dolphins have found them. The volume of birds overhead grows, and the subtle refinements of their hunting technique come to the fore. When the bait fish are close to the surface, the gannets adopt a gentler, shallower dive to grab them just a foot or two below the waves. When the sardines sound, the birds immediately revert to the high dive, hitting the surface at breakneck speed. This is where their efficient design is utilized to the maximum. Slipstream trails extend into the blue, The speed at which they hit the water is extraordinary. And this momentum carries them into the depths. They then adopt an aquatic version of flight, forming a flock 20 meters below the surface. In the chaos of the assault, casualties are inevitable. This bird finds itself in the path of a hungry shark, but miraculously, it spat out. The shoal of sardine is mercilessly ravaged until there are few survivors. The gannets have successfully capitalized on the bait ball, taking their share from between much bigger predators. 
While the bird island gannets are hunting successfully, those on Malchas are still battling the elements. Awkward gaggles of juveniles waddle clumsily towards the windward side of the island, seeking out the direction of the breeze that may lift them off the hard rock. With the lack of wind, this particular day is baking, and the dark-coloured gannet chicks really feel the heat. There's no fresh water on Malchas, so they're on their way to the ocean to cool down. This is their first foray from the flat nesting ground. They've never had to balance like this before. The strongest chick is in the lead, and it takes a leap of faith into the cool water. As the pioneer heads into the surf, the gallery back on the rocks is in disarray. With their leading companion out in the water, decisiveness is absent. How will these awkward creatures ever learn to hunt sardines? Hunger is driving their clumsy efforts but today they're not the only creatures yearning for food. A single seal patrols the edge of the rocks. There are no seal colonies on the island. This one has swum miles looking for sardines. Through sheer hunger, it's ended up at Malchas. The sheer savagery of the attack gives away the seal's desperation. It's given up on sardines and turned its attention to the fledglings. The kelp gulls converge to pick up the scraps. On the east coast, more and more sardines have packed together, and the birds that follow now number in their thousands. The gannets are now 400 kilometers north of Bird Island. The flocks converge on an inshore area known as Waterfall Bluff. This is a funneling point caused by a shift in the coastline, a natural barrier formed by the sheer cliffs. As the dark mass of sardines stream around this barren rocky point, the gannets and their fellow predators lie in wait. Navigating into the throng, the echo sounder registers the bottom at five meters, too shallow to be correct. This is the main shoal that left Agalus months ago. It's so dense that the boat's sonar has read this mass of fish as the seabed. Nine kilometers of tightly packed sardines. 
a massive living juggernaut moving slowly up the coast. This is the run that the Gannets have been chasing. The fish are packed so thick that they black out the sun to a point of pitch dark. Scuba bubbles part the fish again and light streams through. Bigger forms are moving within the shoal. Escorting the sardines are hundreds of sharks. They plow through the fish which scatter ahead of them. There are various species. Duskies and bronze whalers make up the bulk, but the black tips are here too. Ragged tooth males follow this food source for hundreds of kilometers. This movement of the fish is crucial for the shark's entire breeding season. On the west coast, events for the Malchas gannets have taken an even more sinister turn. The single seal is joined by others, and the focus of their attention is now exclusively on the fledglings. The bird is attacked from all sides, but it doesn't give up without a fight. The seal's hunting breaks down into a production line. Birds are hunted and disabled and left to float, while others are immobilized. Wounded fledglings flap around helplessly on the surface, and the seals only return later to eat each one at leisure. Fatalities are high, as the gruesome scene is repeated throughout the day. According to a recent study by the Marine Coastal Management of South Africa, seals are now killing up to 80% of the gannet fledglings around Malchas Island. Even those that escape the seals are sometimes battered by the waves around the rocks. As these birds clamber back on land, it becomes sadly apparent that the shortage of sardines has sealed their fate. For the West Coast gannets, this is the wrong side of the run. They're substituting their own and their chicks' diets with less nutritious fish, but the situation is becoming critical. While all the eastern predators are hunting sardine, their Malkas counterparts have turned on each other.
The main shoal has been holding around Waterfall Bluff for days. The lack of wind has stalled the flow of cool water to the north, and the sardines are hemmed in. They can't continue into warmer water. The shore is on their left, and every predator for hundreds of kilometers is probing their exposed sides. Some of the fish break off in smaller shoals, running for deeper water. It is this exact scenario that the dolphins are waiting for. They work as a team to get the sardines into a tight ball and herd them up to the surface. The birds get access to smaller, more manageable blocks of bait fish, and they initiate their attack. Their relentless diving changes the water from blue to white. The predators are thoroughly focused, and a cameraman in a blue suit doesn't merit a second glance. From this privileged position, we can see how the gannets fit into the feeding system. It's a surprise to find that what looks like anarchy is in fact quite ordered. There's a certain rhythm to the affair, and the dolphins work hard to maintain the order. They use their communication skills to round up the mass of fish. The complex sounds of their vocal commands fill the water and get louder as the bait ball concentrates. The dolphins are the managers of these situations and constantly push the fish towards the surface. Moving the shoal upwards caters for the gannets, and bunching the fish together means that the opportunistic sharks can also get involved. Thanks to the dolphins' skillful bait ball management, they feed comfortably side by side. All this activity attracts other creatures eager to cash in on the building bait ball. Penguins cover long distances looking for the fish, and they hover on the surface waiting for their chance to get at the shoals. Bigger game fish, like the majestic sailfish, sense the vibration from all the feeding too, and move in to investigate. False killer whales sprint in from the deep. They're bigger relatives of the dolphins, and they've also come a long way for the sardines. But these new arrivals are intimidated by the ranks of dolphins and sharks around the bait ball. Preferring instead to stay on the periphery of the killing field, waiting to pick off any stray fish that escape the mayhem. birds are fearless, diving headfirst into this soup of apex predators. This is one of the season's biggest bait balls, and it has attracted a lot of attention. With so many animals feeding at the same trough, it's hard to imagine another predator fitting in. But there is one missing, and it's the biggest. The sudden arrival of a bride's whale changes the dynamic of the bait ball.
the whale has a trick of its own. A bubble curtain to scare sardines towards its opening mouth. The sharks seem to take a more cautious approach to feeding now, making way for the giant that's muscled in. The whale skirts along the side of the ball, taking in hundreds of fish and vast quantities of water. With 20 tons of whale added to the equation, things are somewhat crowded. And with everything trying to get at the sardines, creatures are bound to collide. The gaping mouth of the whale poses a serious risk for any creature that stands in its way. Here, a shark narrowly escapes being engulfed. Another addition to this chaotic ball of action is the cameraman. He's inundated by hungry predators passing close by, but his mind isn't on the sharks. Taking a beating from a whale doesn't happen every day, and he decides to retreat, just as a second whale arrives on the scene. As he moves towards the surface, the ever-decreasing ball of fish follows. As fragments of fish float in the water, these last rushes on the shoal signal the sardine run's death rattle. For the bride's whale, this bait ball is over. After the remains are picked off, the gannets begin to drift upwards. The Bird Island gannets have once again punched above their weight. They've flown hundreds of kilometers, guided the dolphins, dodged the sharks, and have dealt with the addition of massive whales. For the moment, the East Coast sardine stocks are healthy enough to supply all the gathered predators with the nourishment they need to sustain themselves for the year. This year, the sardine run has been a good one. But how long will it stay like this? Back on Malchas, the island is still in the doldrums. There's no wind, and the adult birds who have to hunt for the fledglings need to go fishing. Ranks of fully grown gannets line the rocky ramps on the western boulders, and every time the weak wind puffs, groups of birds charge down the short slope and into the air. The seals are back in force, and they've changed tactics again. Without the wind, some of the adults can't maintain lift, and they land in the foamy water along the shoreline. For the first time, the seals are targeting adult birds. As the mayhem continues out in the bay, the previous victim washes up at the foot of the takeoff rock, revealing a disturbing new reality. The seals, out of desperation, are eating digested fish out of the stomachs of the birds.
As the sardine run on the east coast comes to a close, the shoals begin to move out to sea. The main shoal turns to follow the cold water into the deep and they disperse, heading back to the Agalas banks. The collection of predators also dissipates. After a run like this, they're set for bumper breeding seasons. The gannets return to Bird Island, fat with the oily fish. Bottlenose dolphin head north to their home ranges in subtropical waters. The architect of the bait balls, the common dolphins scatter too, having served the gannets well. While most head south, ragged tooth sharks continue north past Waterfall Bluff, settling on strategic reefs where they look for a mate. The ragged tooth breeding cycle is initiated and fueled by the movement of this east coast migration of sardine. The survival of the gannet and these other keystone species depends heavily on the well-being of the little fish, and a good sardine run equates directly to the success of this predatory group. But as the fishing fleets turn their attention to the East Coast shoals, will the desperate situation around Malchas Island be replicated there? On Malchas, 35% of the gannet population has disappeared. Empty nest piles are a direct result of a lack of food. The gannet population is dwindling. The birds are the perfect marker for the well-being of two ocean environments. Can they step up and overcome the challenges that face them on the coastline around Malchas? How long will they be able to function on the wrong side of the run.